Today I'm going for like a uh, hex girls look. I kind of have my little pigtails going on. I usually don't have my bangs in the front, but today the bangs are out. Um, so here's my little look today. Anyways, hi you guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be talking about the brand Lip Service. And if you guys are unfamiliar with my series Behind the Brand, it's basically a series where I talk about the history of different alternative clothing brands. In episode one, I talked about the brand Delius. Um, it's a very interesting story. They actually went bankrupt. If you want to go watch the video, it is on my channel. And then I also talked about the brand Trip NYC and kind of their uh, evolution from the 80s all the way to today. So if you want to go watch those two videos, those are also on my channel. But today is episode 3 of Behind the Brand, and we are going to be talking about a most requested brand called Lip Service. Before we start, if you guys are not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button just to be notified whenever I post a new video. And if you guys have any suggestions of other brands you want me to talk about in the future, go ahead and put them in the comments. I would love to research them and talk about them for you guys. All right, so according to the dictionary definition of lip service, it actually means an insincere expression of friendship, admiration, support, or service by words only. And I think the term lip service um, already existed before the brand lip service existed and there's actually a band called lip service and a tv show called lip service um, so the phrase already existed before the brand did and the creator drew bernstein actually claimed that for his clothing brand so lip service was actually started in 1985 by a man called drew bernstein and if you know anything about the alternative scene in california in the 80s his name might have popped up he was really popular in the music scene he has been in two bands or two bands that i know of he might have been in more or done his own you know solo stuff but he was in a band called america's hardcore and a band called crucifix and in addition to being in the music scene at the time he was also into the fashion scene and he actually worked with a a clothing company called Nana or Nana I don't know which how, way to pronounce it um, but that was one of his first jobs being like a sales rep for that brand and after doing some research um, kind of how lip service came to arise is that you know he started printing on leggings and at this time he said that there were only solid color leggings so he thought it'd be cool if he could like try to screen print a design onto a pair of leggings and see if anybody would want them and people loved them um, one of the first designs that he actually did which uh, lip service still uses in their designs today is actually a skull and dagger graphic I'll go ahead and put a picture here of what I mean but um, this was the one of the first graphics to be printed on these first ever pieces of lip service uh, like clothing so I couldn't really figure out which one it is online but um, in some articles it said that he started printing this in his mom's garage and in other articles it said he started printing this stuff in the back of his car so either way, it was, you know, being handmade by him uh, in small batches, and that's kind of how uh, lip service started. So once he started coming out with these really cool leggings um, and other screen printed designs, a lot of alternative brands started picking up on, you know, these designs and they wanted to sell them in their stores. So a bunch of boutiques in the 80s started carrying his stuff like Retail Slut and uh, Nana and a bunch of other boutiques started, um, you know, buying stuff in bulk from him so that they could sell it in their stores. And eventually a big brand we all know and love, Hot Topic, ended up, uh, you know, selling his stuff. So in the 80s and 90s, they actually did open two in-person shops. Um, they were both in California. One of them was on Melrose Avenue and the other one was on Hollywood Boulevard. But unfortunately, they both closed before the year 2000. So in the 90s, lip service just kept getting more popular and eventually the lead singer of Guns N' Roses ended up wearing a lip service jacket and that just kind of skyrocketed sales for lip service. So something super notable about like the uh, late 90s and early 2000s lip service that I absolutely love is that they are an alternative brand, but they cater to a bunch of like uh, subgenres of alternative clothing. So for example, they, you know, they have punk and rock and metal, glam, grunge, techno, goth, cyber, fetish, and they even make their own genres of clothing like mobster goth or like skunk punk. And there's just so many like different like subgenres of clothing that lip service has created. And I think that is just so awesome because a lot of alternative brands like to stick to one aesthetic, but lip service just creates clothes for the weirdos that's kind of that's kind of what uh their like catchphrase is they make clothes for the weirdos something else that's really cool about lip service is that they actually have these 
awesome, awesome catalogs that came out um, from 1999 all the way up to 2011. And um, when they first came out, um, they were catalogs, so you could shop lip service through them. And you know, there's a number you'd call, you'd place your order, it'd come in the mail, just kind of like how catalogs worked in the 90s and early 2000s. But these catalogs, I'm telling you guys, these are just so iconic and awesome. So I'm going to be putting some pictures up of some of my favorite pages right here, but these are just so, they're so put together. And like I said earlier, just all the subgenres of alternative clothing that Lip Service wanted to curate to is just so, it's so diverse and it's so amazing. And they just have clothes for like every alternative subgenre, you know, they had like club outfits and they had, you know, fur coats and mini skirts and maxi dresses and stuff with buckles and chains and you know latex and like metallic holographic stuff and I am just this brand was just awesome honestly. So something really cool that I found while I was doing all this research is a website where someone actually um, scanned all of the lip service magazines and all the insides of the magazines and I was just like so happy that I found this little like treasure chest online. So what I've actually been doing and it's actually taking me a couple days to do because there's so many pictures is that I have been uploading these pictures onto Pinterest on onto a Pinterest board called uh, lip service catalogs. So if you guys uh, you know see any of these images and you want to save them to a Pinterest board or you just want to browse all of the images, um, I'll go ahead and put the Pinterest board link in my description. If you guys just want to, you know, browse it, I would really appreciate it just because this is taking me forever to transfer everything. Um, and then I do have a link to the website in the uh, Pinterest board description if you just want to go straight to the website as well. So in the year 2006, Drew created another brand called Kill City. It was basically similar to lip service, but it was a little bit more casual and more uh, wallet friendly. And later in his life, Drew would also start two other alternative brands. One of them is called 24 Hours and the other one is called Widow. So eventually Drew's running like four brands, um, but they are all like similar because they all have, you know, the alternative aesthetic, but he actually describes them uh, very distinctly. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how he describes them. So he said, so with all the different brands, there are weirdos in the center and then there's lip service. And he describes lip service as sexy weirdos. Kill City is pretentious weirdos. 24 Hours is trendy weirdos, and Widow is spooky weirdos. So I just thought that was funny that he described like um, his four brands that he was running at the time as having these different weirdos aesthetic. So as we all know, um, in the like mid 2010s, there was kind of like an economic downturn. So lip service did take a hit for the worse. Before the downturn, lip service was doing awesome and they were making about $12 million in sales every year. But Bernstein was having a hard time uh, keeping lip service afloat, you know, having new designs come out, um, keeping employees he's had for years, and he was just overall struggling with the business. So unfortunately, in 2014, Drew actually passed away due to an apparent suicide. I'm not going to go into uh, details about it, but if you do want to know more about it, you can do an easy Google search. It was a very sad, um, tragic passing, and he had a lot of loved ones and friends that were just so heartbroken over it. Um, so unfortunately, lip service kind of did take a hit for the worse um, whenever this happened. And in April of 2016, um, you know, lip service really wasn't doing very well. So they kept their website open, but they closed their social media sites and their customer service email. So nobody really knows why uh, lip service temporarily closed um, or like shut down their brand um, for a little bit in 2016. But um, I did find a, I think it was a Reddit thread or just somewhere online where people were talking and they talked about how it had to do with maybe like the fact that sales weren't going well. Um, they said before, you know, the website and everything closed down, they were doing a bunch of sales. Maybe they were trying to get rid of a bunch of inventory. People just didn't know what was happening. And people overall theorized that it had to do with the lowering quality of uh, lip service pieces over the years, unfortunately. So today in 2021, um, lip service is open. I don't know how shortly after their temporary close in uh, 2016 did they reopen. I'm not sure. Um, but today in 2021, they are open. They have their website that you can shop on. And to my knowledge, they are doing pretty well. So in comparison to their pieces from the early 2000s and the 90s, which were a lot more colorful, you know, contained a lot more, you know, textures and fabrics and patterns, um, today lip service is really just black and white pieces and I can best describe it as like modern goth 
and they do have a couple pieces that are reminiscent of their 90s and early 2000s styles but overall it is just in my opinion I think that it just doesn't cater to as many people as it used to their aesthetic has really just you know become more defined and not really as diverse as it used to be. So actually on their website, they do talk about how lip service is not really a sustainable brand, so to say, but they do try to, you know, locally make stuff and make sure they, you know, are as, as low waste as possible, which is great for a clothing brand. Um, but something else that is awesome is that $2 from every purchase from lip service actually is donated to different organizations like PETA, Mercy for Animals, and so many others. So I think it's really cool that they donate a portion of their sales. Just kind of a quick little PSA. If you guys are interested in purchasing lip service, I do recommend that you get it secondhand because um, on their website it does say that they are not sustainable. And of course, like it's like you can do anything you want with your money. But um, if you want to look for those really cool lip service pieces, I highly recommend you look on Poshmark, eBay, Depop, um, you know, even Facebook Marketplace. Just Getting an item secondhand from a brand that isn't sustainable is the most sustainable option if you kind of catch my drift. So that is all for today's video. I had such a fun time, uh, you know, researching this brand and I know a lot of you requested this video so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. And also if you have any requests for any brands that you want me to do for my next episode, please let me know in the comments. I would love to do any other brands. Um, I'm thinking of doing brands like Angel Blue, Hysteric Glamour. I'm definitely going to do a video on UNIF because we got a lot to cover when we talk about UNIF. Um, and then I guess I want to do Hot Topic as well. So if there's any brands that I didn't mention that you guys want me to do, please drop a comment. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a good day. Be sure to check out my other episodes as well. Um, I hope you all have a good day. Bye.